Ebrook Scholars, it's me, Mr. Gilbert. Thanks for tuning in. Today is actually Sunday. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, it's May 10th. May 10th today. Oh, there's my, my kid is. Um, it's Mother's Day. So if you haven't wished your mom a happy Mother's Day or your grandma or your aunt, any of those moms out there, happy Mother's Day to you. Um, my, my wife and mother-in-law are actually downstairs taking a nap, and so are the kids right now. It's amazing. Um, so I'm shooting this video today on Sunday, um, and you're going to complete it tomorrow, Monday, May 11th. So uh, I believe you read this article last week with Mr. Scott. This is Life in the Deep Freeze by Sandra Markle. And let's take a look at the question we're going to be answering today. How do animals survive in the Arctic? Whoops. In the Arctic. In the Arctic. In cold winters. I apologize for that. Um, which is actually basically the prompt of the article. It says, how do animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters? Um, so we're going to just take that. We're going to stretch that out today. And there's lots and lots and lots you can do with this article. So let me pull this article up. Once again, you're going to be answering the prompt, part of my um, bad typing. How do animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters? You know what? Mr. Gilbert is just all over the place today. Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, so how do the animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters? Now, if you don't have a pencil and paper, please pause the video. Go grab a pencil and a paper so you can highlight and write down notes as we're going to be uh, completing this plan. Now, we're going to complete the plan today. Whoops. Oh, man, I am just not in my typing mode. Um, complete the plan as a box and bullet plan today. So we're going to plan three uh, points out. And after e each plan, we're going to give a supporting detail to answer the question. Again, you don't need to type it. You certainly can, but you can also write it and snap a picture. Just make sure that you drag and drop when you're snapping that picture. So how do animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters? Let's go ahead. Whoops, we need Adobe here. And let's open this up and let's... There we go. Uh, no, I like me in this corner. Um, let's go ahead and let's answer that question. So let's start by rereading the article. And as we're rereading it, I'll stop periodically. Let's highlight some information together. Let's put some information in. Here we go. How do, sorry, Life in the Deep Freeze by Sandra Markle. How do animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters? So paragraph one, it's noon and dark and very cold, minus 30. Ooh. Snow and ice blanket the region. Strong winds blow across the ice-covered ocean waters. It's winter in the Arctic, one of the harshest environments on Earth. But for many animals, this place is home. So just where is the Arctic? It's about as far north as you can go. It's the North Polar region, the Arctic Ocean plus the lands bordering it. The landscape varies from high, icy mountains to tundra. Oh, excuse me. That's a treeless plain where a layer of soil remains frozen all year. Arctic animals have adapted. I'm not supposed to say that word in science class. They have well to their surroundings with some rather clever, unusual tactics. Let's go down to paragraph three, escape artists. So remember, we're answering the question, how do they survive in the cold winters? Paragraph three, some Arctic animals have found clever ways to wait out the long, harsh winters. For example, the grizzly bear spends all spring, summer, and fall eating and storing up fat. Then the bear goes into a special type of sleep. During its winter sleep, the grizzly lives off stored fat. To conserve energy, the bear's internal temperature drops a few degrees. Its heart rate slows down too. Very interesting. Now, I know this because my daughter reads um, a uh, I can't think of the book right now. She's sleeping. A bear book every night to go to sleep, and we learn all about bears. Er. Okay. The colored lemming, this fur relative of mice and rats, changes its coat from grayish brown to white in winter. Hmm. It also grows longer front claws. With their claws, lemmings dig tunnels under the wind-packed snow. I feel like I should just be doing effects for this. They live, uh, sorry, they live protected from the cold and predators. Okay, so right now, again, we're answering the question. How do animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters? There are a lot of information in Escape Artist. So Escape Artist is basically one of your... There's a cat. Shocking. Um, go ahead right now. Take a look at paragraphs, really, 
paragraphs three, four, five. You're going to use one and two to, to do your framing when we actually write. But take a look at paragraphs three, four, and five. And with this, I want you to come up with at least one detail. So why don't you go back in, in your plan. I'm going to put my plan here side by side. And use that to come up with your first bullet point. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties as per normal with Mr. Gilbert. the laptop down just for a second. In case you were wondering, yes, there was a cat in the closet. And there's a cat on the chair. There's cats everywhere. All right, give you one more minute to plan this out. Okay, so again, your writing is going to look different than mine, but I'm going to use for my first example. Like we said, we're going to look at paragraphs three, four, and five. And I'm going to write about the escape artist. artist. I'm going to write AKA the grizzly, grizzly bear. <clears throat> now, here's where I'm actually going to expand on what I mean by the escape artist, the grizzly bear. Yes, I know. No. Um, he doesn't like it, also known as. Um, I'm going to go ahead and expand on what I mean by it escapes the cold winters. Um, and I'm going to say the, the grizzly bear stores fat and is able to, um, I'm going to use that word hibernate um, as the temperature drops. Um, so again, I'm not writing full complete sentences here. I'm just expanding on what the article has. It's an escape artist. It escapes the cold, the grizzly bear, um, and it does that by uh, storing food in its body, conserving its energy, hibernating, and lasting or escaping, escaping uh, the long, harsh winter of the Arctic. So by doing this, the grizzly bear is able to uh, survive in those really, really ridiculous conditions of the Arctic. Now, again, yours isn't going to look exactly like mine. You might want to do the lemming. Um, so your plan should not look identical to Mr. Gilbert's. Let me just say that. Let's continue with paragraph three. Remember, we're answering the question, how do animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters? Let's look at the layered look. Let's start with paragraph six. Here we go. For some animals, being fat means staying alive. Do, 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 do. Staying alive. No. Okay. Anyways, uh, that's especially true for animals that hunt and live in the icy waters of the Arctic Ocean. Burr. Walrus. This animal keeps warm even while digging for clams along the bottom of cold ocean waters. Under its Inch thick hide. It's about an inch. You're learning that with Miss uh, Dixon in measurement. That's a lot of skin. That's a lot of hide. Um, the walrus has a nearly six inch layer of blubber or fat to block out the cold. Deep sea dives, warm blood shifts away from the skin surface to inside the body. This helps the walrus keep its body heat stable around 99 degrees Fahrenheit. The walrus moves ashore, blood flows back to the skin. Interesting. Harp seals. Protected by a thick layer of blubber, the harp seal spends most of the time in icy waters. The seal is a fast swimmer and can stay underwater for 30 minutes at a time. Its speed in the water allows it to escape a predator. Oh, sorry, its predator. The polar bear. Er, as my daughter would say, bear. Er. In late winter, females climb onto the chunk of ice to give birth. Er. A seal pup is born with a white fluffy coat, but no blubber. The pup keeps a coat until it develops a layer of blubber, and that happens fast. On a diet of fat-rich mother's milk, a pup can gain over 80 pounds in just three weeks? Wow. Okay, let's pause there, because again, we, we're looking at the, the heading here. A layered look, it gives you a if you hint about how animals survive the cold winters, take a look at paragraphs six through eight right now. Jot one of those down in your plan and let's write about it. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Um, and then we will continue in just a moment.
Okay, so if you need more time, go ahead and take more time. Um, I'm gonna write about the walrus here. So I'm gonna write walrus in my uh, box and bullet plan. And I'm gonna write about the walrus um, has a very thick, uh, is a, it's a hide, okay, hide. And then I'm gonna expand on why that helped it survive. Um, this helps the walrus survive in the Arctic, oops, Arctic, um, by keeping it warm as it, as it, let's say, swims and hunts, ah, hunts for food. Okay. Um, so again, not a complete sentence, uh, but again, expanding on that idea, coming back to the prompt here, let's highlight that prompt to know back while we're answering. Um, how do animals survive in the Arctic cold waters? Well, for example, the walrus has special skin. It's super, super, super thick. We said about an inch thick. And then there's blubber that's like six inches thick. This all helps the blood flow differently. Um, of course, when it's back on land, things are back to normal, but it keeps a walrus cold in Arctic waters. Um, and that has to be, I mean, some cold, cold water. Now here in New Hampshire and Massachusetts, the water's already absolutely freezing. Think of the Arctic. That's really cold. You can't just get in that water without freezing. All right. Remembering the question, how do animals survive in the Arctic's cold waters? Let's go ahead and let's write our uh, read and write our third and final bullet point. So dressed for winter. Here we go. We have about one, two, three, uh, five paragraphs. And I bet you this is going to get our final answer. So let's go ahead and let's read this. Dressed for winter. Like you, many animals change their coats in the seasons. In winter, these animals replace their summer coats with thicker ones to keep them warm and temperatures plunge. They wear their thick coats for a long time. Arctic winters can last for up to eight months. The Arctic hare. The Arctic hare living in the northernmost part of the Arctic stays white all year, but its fur grows thicker and longer in winter. The hare has small ears that protect it too. Can you figure out how? Less skin is exposed to the cold and the small ears lose less body heat than the larger ears. Okay, let's go into the musk ox. The animal has lots of hair to keep it warm. The fact the native Inuit people call it the, uh, let's see here, I have to zoom in here to even read this, the umamak, um, 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 uh, I think that's a silent J, umamak, meaning the animal, the skin like a beard, the musk ox shaggy outer coat covers everything but its feet. Underneath, this outer layer of coarse, coarse hair is even more hair, a soft woolly coat. The musk ox sheds this undercoat when the weather gets warmer. Musk oxen also have curved hooves with sharp rims. That gives them solid footing on icy slopes. Okay. Snowy owls. Feathers keep these this the feathers keep this bird warm. The snowy owl's entire body, even its legs and toes, is covered with white fluffy feathers. On top of this coat is still another coat of underlapping feathers. When temperature drops, the owl crouches on the ground behind an object that can block the wind. The owl stays still. Flying would use its precious uh, sorry would use up precious heat energy. And finally, our last paragraph. Arctic fox. As winter approaches, the fox replaces its brown summer fur for a longer, heavy snow white coat. The new coat keeps the fox warm as well as hidden from predators like the wolf. A special blood flow system helps the fox hang on to its natural body temperatures. Warm blood flowing toward the fox's legs heat up and cool blood returning from its feet. This means the Arctic fox has a warm body and cold feet. Having cold feet Helps, too. Ice doesn't stick to cold toes. I did not know that. Hmm. Okay. Well, again, you're answering the question, how do animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters? Now, I'm having some issues right now with my PDF file here. Make sure you're highlighting and underlining that information. When my video is done, I'm going to go try to go back and underline this. But for some reason, it has not been working for me. Make sure you're trying to underline that and it stays there. It looks like actually might might actually finally be clicking. Okay. Um. Find your information, use paragraphs right now, paragraphs 9 through 13, and write that final piece of evidence to support uh, how do animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters. Go ahead and write that.
Okay, so if you need more time, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and write mine. I'm going to actually pull mine from the Arctic Air. Again, you have four different answers. Or, uh, answers. You have one, two, three, four, right? But yours shouldn't be exactly like mine. If I write about the Arctic Air, maybe you, whoops, I didn't do that. Um, you should write about a different one. I'm going to challenge you right now to, to pick another animal, like the ox, the owl, or the fox. Um, but I'm going to talk about the Arctic Air. I'm going to say that the Arctic Air uh, grows longer and thicker. Uh, fur in the winter to help survive, survive in the arc. Ah, it's cold, harsh winters. Again, I'm just using this to to really go back. Let's see if I can highlight that now. It wasn't working when I was playing around with it this evening. Uh, so let's see if we can do Arctic care. Yes, finally. Okay, now we're able to move and click here. Um, so the Arctic hair, uh, it's fur grows slicker in the winter, so we can highlight that. Um, I can make sure you're marking up the text. My apologies, my my computer's been a little wonky with um, clicking and, and stuff going on here. I'm not sure why. Um, but again, make sure you're highlighting or marking up the text in some way so that you can actually uh, answer the question, how do animals survive in the Arctic's cold winters? Okay, my friends. Well, that's all we have for today. Once again, I am very excited to see all of you very soon. Um, let's see. Uh, like I said, <laughs> it is Sunday, May 10th. Please wish your mothers a happy Mother's Day. Um, if you're on Eastern, I'll see you tomorrow for our video Zoom chat. I was thinking to myself, are they going to see this before? You might see this before we, we Zoom chat. Um, but I will see you all very soon. Um, have a great day, everyone. Bye.